everyone, this is the Mad Salvi letting you know that unless things are proven with Twitter posts and stuff like that and actual, have actual proof behind it, treat everything in this thing as a theory. I will mark try to mark certain things as news and theory and everything like that to kind of let you guys understand, but also, you know, use a critical mind. And I hope you do enjoy. Here is the quarter four report that everybody has. Uh, the basic TLDR of what everyone has is EN recorded the lowest revenue in two years, particularly damning since it's the only quarter when EN event revenue had any re event revenue in two years. Uh, income sustained by main branch, no surprise there. Livestream incoming decreased. Uh, quite significant decline in quarter one, 2024. No huge bump in event revenue. Plan going forward is still debut, more fresh meat. 6% revenue from events is absolutely laughable. The NBA collab actually made it into the decks. So here's where we get things started. We have the beginning parts where, you know, they're talking about uh, what they're going to be doing for the fiscal year. A lot of overview of operating results. You know, they're, they're basically saying here that they did have some more operating cash. They did have some more cash on hand. They are, um, the assets were a little bit bigger compared to before. Uh, the liabilities uh, were 5 million yen. Uh, it is an increase. They had an increase in liabilities, which means, you know, the things that they actually had to pay for. The cash flow was good. Future outlook. They want the... for. The fiscal year ending in April 30th, 2025, they, they want to take advantage of their strengths, get rid of the weaknesses, you know, have more good stuff going on there when it comes to that. So uh, accounting standards, company policies to prepare fiscal statements in accordance with gaps uh, for the time being, taking into consideration everything else. Let's take a look at their actual numbers. Let's take a look at the numbers, Mason. The first just pure numbers report. Then we're going to get into the uh, the slide decks and things like that. The assets. As of April 30, 2023, they have 12 million in assets. Now they have, a year later, they have 16 million in assets. Uh, accounts receivable, I believe this is all in dollars right now. Uh, thousands of yen, in thousands of yen. So they have 12 billion in cash and deposits, 12 billion yen in assets now. Accounts receivables, 5 billion yen compared to 3 billion yen, so they almost doubled it. Inventories, they added a little bit to that. Prepaid expenses right here, you know, a uh, 100,000. They have others here, which is 24,000 to 55,000. Total current assets are going to be uh, 23 to 17. Non current assets are all these things here. The uh, buildings, they have a little bit more buildings. Depreciation of the buildings accumulated a bit. They have the buildings net is going to be 101, so it's still a little bit lower. Uh, total proprietary plants and other information and equipment is 475. Uh, intangible assets. Look at all these intangible assets that they have, uh, 60, 76,000 software. They have more costs. These are all the costs, pretty much. The assets and costs and things like that. Lease deposits over here, 48 versus 607. Deferred taxes, tax assets, 242 versus 206 in the past. So everything's increasing. Investments and other assets, they increased a little bit on investments, as, they, as you know. They've always said that their investments are not a big thing for them. They're uh, something that they are going to be doing short-term versus long-term. <clears throat> In total assets, they have 25 billion yen versus 18 billion yen. So, from what it looks like. Current liabilities, uh, their, their full liabilities here, we're going to look at, you know, accounts, receivables, payables, deposits, all this other kind of stuff. We're looking at the total numbers right now. The current liabilities are about the same. They haven't really changed, which means they haven't really invested in anything. That means they haven't invested in their talents. They haven't put money into their talents. They haven't put money into anything like that because they're when your liabilities stay about the same, that's the things you've spent on the things that are costing you money. If they stay about the same, that means you're not investing in your company very much. If you look, if you remember covers, covers like I think almost doubled their liabilities. So they spent a lot more on, on you know, assets, on uh, helping their livers, on management, that type of stuff. Total liability is a non-current. It's, if it stayed about the same, again, I said, you know, uh, the assets, the full capital surplus, which is, you know, the, the extra that they have on hand, they have 2 billion yen extra on hand from what it looks like. Um, restrained or retained earnings. These are the earnings uh, brought forward. They earned almost double, which, you know, the earnings look good. Retained earnings look almost double. So it actually is positive for them. Treasury stock, they actually have some money in reserve, money to spend in reserve just in case. Uh, they have their emergency fund right there. Shareholders equity, the equity has raised for shareholders. Apparently, that's what shareholders love to see, that their equity is going up, which means that it's good for them. Total liabilities and net assets, 18 million, 18 billion, I guess in this case, 25 billion liabilities and assets are moving forward. Again, looking at just the full picture because I don't want to freaking take too long. Uh, net sales, the operating profit, the selling generated administrative is they sold about 2 million, 2 billion of that. Gross profit was 15 million uh, after, you know, selling general administrative expenses. The net pro the operating profit is 2, 12.3, whatever million. And that is before they have to pay taxes on it. 
because they're going to have to pay taxes on this. I don't know what the, the, the corporate tax code is in Japan, but they definitely have to pay taxes on that. Non-operating income, they have very little non-operating income from interest, subsidy, and others. So that can be a negative on their end. It means that they are, in this case, basically, they got no interest. They got no subsidies. Like they had gotten like, I guess, a government subsidy before in uh, 2023, and they didn't have it now. Uh, operating expenses, interest expense, all that kind of stuff, all their IPO stuff, non-operating expenses, basically their investment expenses, things like that or that. The full net profit, which is what we're looking for, is $8 million. It did go up, so they did have a profit. That is something that the investors look at, something that the investors want to see. So capital stock, all this other kind of stuff, the stock market stuff, changes in equity. Uh, it looks like total net assets are 13 billion here. Uh, in issuance of new shares. So they made new shares. They had new shares out there. Uh, 70,000 here. The net profit is 6 million, as you saw there. Uh, fiscal year this year, it's 8 million and 19 million, as they're showing here in this this uh, this little chart here. Uh, they are having cash flows. Their subtotal cash flows are 10 million now. It's above from 8 million. All these things, depreciation, foreign exchanges. This is basically write-offs, uh, operating arc activities. A lot of the write-offs here, uh, cash flows from investing activities, all these things, uh, cash flows from financing activities, and the cash and cash equivalents, they did go up. So all these up numbers are definitely something that they're going to be looking at. Uh, financial statements, per share information, net assets per share is higher, basic earnings per share is higher, uh, diluted earnings per share is higher than it was last year, as you can see in the comparison charts. And yeah, the profits are up. So that's going to make the uh, investors want to buy more. Uh, fortunately or unfortunately for you, this is just the chart part. We're going to be moving on to the uh, other parts. So we're moving on to the slide deck, the one that everyone wants to see, the visuals. So the old years on the right and the new years in this one, it's a year on year. It's 47% growth for revenue. Uh, in 12 months to 12 months, it's 26% year on year growth for the second slide. For the third one, it's a 97% progress on forecast. So they didn't fully reach their forecast, but they got close. So I knew they were, like I told you guys, it was going to be less than 7%. If you guys go back, it was going to be less than 7% of the uh, difference in forecast and what they got. It wasn't going to be a huge decline, like some people were saying, or a huge apocalypse because they have Nidhi Sanji JP giving them a huge boost compared to Nidhi Sanji Yen. And here we have direct variable cost, 36% growth, other cost, 27% growth, operating profit, 74% growth over here with the year on year. Uh, in 12.7, yeah, you have 31% growth here, still 97% of what they expected. Ordinary profit, you can see all of it here, 75%. 30% and 97% of what they expected. Uh, net profit after all your expenses, all your other stuff. This is what they expect to have net 67% year on year growth, 30% uh, uh, year on year growth and 97% year on year growth for 12 months, 12 months and quarter to quarter, 12 months, to 12 months and forecast to progress. And here we have a more stuff. They turn some profits, but like I said, it's all has to do with JP because we're going to see right here by business area, you have uh, millions of yen, 47% uh, year on year growth, but they had live streaming was very small. It stayed small. Uh, the commerce, the, their, their, um, their actual things that they sell still was less than quarter one from what I can see. And, uh, the events was a little bit bigger than quarter one. It was actually bigger than all the other ones, actually bigger than almost a year. Uh, and their promotions, which was, you know, their other concerts and I, the, their other things there, um, their collaborations, that type of stuff did a lot of sales and other was very little. So revenue by group, this is the one that everyone's focusing on because this is the, the one on the left is putting everything together, including EN and everything. The one on the right is showing the difference between EN and JP. JP is still like 97% of their growth. That's 7,500 uh, of million, 7.5 7 billion yen. And Nidisanji EN year on year, it dropped. Year on year, it dropped like 30%. So it's it's almost a 30% drop year on year of what they had. Like it's quite literally, like I think it's literally like a 30% drop for uh, after what happened with Selene. So EN is the one that suffered after Selene. JP pretty much came out unscathed because year on year they had growth. And even um, quarter, like quarter one compared to quarter four in the full year, they still had near as much growth. They had actually more growth, a little bit of growth compared to the year on year. And even everything, um, you can see EN is dropping. So their external markets are dropping. Uh, everything else kind of remained flat. Advertising revenue remained flat. Super chat decreased. 
as reaction to increased influence by Nidisanti Festival. Sales and 6th anniversary merchandise and Alive were strong, according to that, because merchandise was very strong. In quarter four, we held events such as Corona Noir, all those other events which supposedly brought more commerce, more events, uh, you know, money on year on year. And compared to the same period last year, both the number of projects and unit prices of projects went up. We we're having this here uh, due to improvement in profit margins, commerce and events business, uh, the other SGNA increasing cost due to year business, office related expenses, uh, construction of a new studio and other one time promotion expenses that all went up. We have here uh, direct variable costs and other costs, SGNA, operating profits, that type of thing. It all, according to this, the numbers were still low, lower year on year, direct variable cost. Other SGNA, um, other you know, like other cost type of things like that, was uh, the bonus was lower year on year. Everything kind of year on year, even profit, profit went up a little bit year on year, but it went down compared to quarter one. Uh, number of VTuber and any color ID, number of VTubers has stayed about the same. They haven't really gotten very many, and they've had EN had some drop and some come in, so it stayed the number the same. We all know that ID and thousands of accounts. Uh, that are, um, you know, I guess dropped in this case. Quarter four, three new debuts, two graduations from Nidhi San Jien. They didn't even talk about terminations because that's a bad look for them. As in, an important growth investment, in future basis opportunities, the number of employees has grown. We'll take a look at business has 258. So they've actually grown their business uh, side a little bit. Designer, 73. Engineer, uh, 77. Corporate, 22. So that corporate, I guess, would be managers, CEOs, that type of things. In, in total and that's like yeah business administration studio like yeah the 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 business side event planning they don't even have like management here they don't even show management at all that's a bad one right there summary of financial results revenue year on year growth of 26.3 uh year on year growth of operating profit margin 31.4 percent and year on year growth 30.3 percent for net margins that is all due to jp from what it looks like live streaming stayed pretty much stagnant for um for year on year and commerce went up year on year uh, from eight from 14 to 18. The events went up year on year and the promotion went up year on year. So live streaming money was stayed the same. So it didn't really, they didn't improve on live stream. They improved on the other things, on the outside media businesses. Revenue by quarter of product sales and revenue volatility at each product commerce balance. The balance of quarterly revenue fluctuates significantly per fiscal year. They're still the number wise. They're still a little bit above is what they're trying to show. In the fiscal year, um, they, they're uh, uh, they're staying still higher than quarter one. They're higher than quarter two um, on most things, either equal or below. Like they on uh, quarter three, uh, fiscal year 2023, four. They're like from year to year to year, they've been growing. Is what they're trying to show. They're trying to show that there's been growth, and uh, from the beginning to the end, they try to stay around the same. There's some fluctuations that happen, but they try to stay the same. That's what they're trying to tell investors, at least. Financial forecast for fiscal year 2025, same as, as last fiscal year. We plan continuous business growth through each VTuber revenue expansion on VTuber unit initiatives and new debuts of VTubers. By business area, our plan focus on business growth through commerce and by group, business growth is driven by Nidhi Sanji in Japan, although there are fluctuations due to timing of commerce and event initiatives. We plan to stabilize quarterly fluctuations more compared to last fiscal year. And that is, you know, the revenue that we're seeing. That's the big revenue growth that we're seeing. And it's first half, second half, and final for the financial results for 2025. For uh, That's what their forecasts. That's what they're forecasting. And this is what they got for this year. This is what they're forecasting for next year. The one on the left. All the left are all the things they're forecasting based on what they're seeing now. The forecasts look uh, a little bit more reserved than it was before. Like the more reserved than, than they, they are thinking. Uh, yeah, they're having pretty much more reserved on everything because I think they didn't meet their fiscal year this year. For next quarter one, they expect the following performance. This is what they're expecting. The revenue we're expecting to go uh, be stagnant around maybe like compared to quarter one of 2024. Uh, they're kind of being very, very reluctant to go really high because they got screwed over this year. I think that's one of those things. Live streaming, uh, commerce here, you know, uh, events, all these things, the promotions, that's what they're wanting to do. Operating profit, it's going to be about 25% growth is what they're expecting. Key initiatives, they plan to release various anniversary goods, seasonal stuff, promotions. They want uh, diverse corporate projects. The NBA made it into the slide, even though the NBA was kind of a negligible one. Uh, plan to hold multiple medium-sized events, which are their concerts, like their Sambaka and the Joe Rikichi first live. Their financials, as we went over before, are down here. I already went over the income statement in my last slide. 
but just going over it a little bit the revenue year on year fiscal year they are um they had 78.9 uh year on year growth on 2023 versus 26.3 now so this is the one we we're looking for on the right on the right on the left are all the the good numbers that they had in 2023 but they've only grown 26.3 percent full year 52.3 percent on cost of sales uh 5.9 percent on direct variable costs um other cost of sales so they're they're they've the margin has grown 47.5 which is a bit better than last year which is 45.7 uh year on year growth for operating profit was 124.5 in 2023 they had a really good year that year 2024 is 31.4 of course hurt by en in the bit in the long run you have more things going on here of the margins uh 37.3 percent year on year growth and 38.6 percent this year and the year on year growth of net income is 139.8 for 2023 compared to 2022 right now it's 30.3 so that number is way less than people were expecting but it is something that is to be seen jp like i said jp is the one that's been growing they've had large uh full year growth for both 2023 and 2024 as you can see 2024 they had a much better year than 2023 with 18 18 billion they have 26 billion now the promotions and everything were uh either equal or better like commerce was way better 9k for 9 uh 9k million yen versus the other you know billion yen en had um a drop from four from six four oh four for the full you know the full uh everything from all the numbers together and now they have four eight six six so you saw that drop that is like a 20 percent drop 20 or 25 percent drop or more so it's it's like it's the full 30 percent drop that they're seeing other is 533 and 409 so they see like a full almost 30 percent drop on everything that's going on it's like that's really bad that's almost two two billion yen that they dropped so overall en is not doing very well as we all knew by now total revenue 25 uh billion yen back in uh 2023 31 billion yen so overall they're having more revenue which is what a lot of people want to see the sgna and cogs and stuff like that is uh 13764 for cost of sales and 16789 for cost of sales here so the cost went up a bit uh the sgna is um 2170 and 2845 so these are like the costs and these are the, the things the expenses that they have uh current assets are still higher than they were last year 23,630 versus 17,582, 572. Non-current assets, 901 versus 14,477. So inventories, accounts, receivables, payables, all that kind of stuff. Cash deposits, total assets is 25 billion yen, which is more than they had before. The current liabilities, they uh, have more liabilities overall because they've, they've just grown in size. So they have a bit more liabilities and everything. Uh, the cash flow statements, they have more cash on hand. They have more cash flow from investing. They have more cash flow from financing activities. Net change in cash is uh, 3808 and cash equivalents. They do have a bit more cash equivalents on at end of period. So that's the type of thing. Forward looking statements. Of course, they're all kind of stuff looking forward, saying that they're not going to be actual things. Information contained with this material is published with information from other sources. It's an English translation. There may be some confusion there. That's the whole big thing there. But as we saw through that, we know that EN is not helping them at all. This here is the business overview, the management section of their report as the reports tend to be long i will try to shorten it as much as i can it says we are the largest vtuber group in japan yes just ba based on numbers we're building a new ecosystem to developing multiple services yeah right they aren't expanding the fan community that's what they're saying they're doing constructive engagement they're not really constructively engaging in anything real work connections who knows about that one improving brand recognition you've been recognized on the negative end on the en side en you're recognized for being a black company unfortunately Long-term performance prog progress. They've seen steady growth in the business as they're showing here. Uh, revenue in millions of Japanese yen. Uh, number of affiliated VTubers at the end of term. So the reason why they're growing, the reason why their numbers have stayed high is they're showing here is because they have a lot of, of livers. Revenues in millions of Japanese yen is 31 billion and the full revenue and operating profit is 12 billion. So they have been going up. That's because they've been keeping their e their JP side really high. Business model, a uh, few VTubers selected from approximately 10,000 auditioneers. So they, they'd select very few and they're saying live stream percent of revenue is 16%, commerce 59%, promotion 18% and revenue is just a measly, small, tiny, tiny, tiny 6%. So that's kind of laughable that their events aren't doing so well. Selection and training of VTuber candidates through VTA. They try to do that, of course. VTA has held auditions. It's been kind of quiet recently, but they have held auditions. So that's what they've been trying to do. They're saying that they're using that to promote better 
uh, talents. They're saying quarterly revenue fluctuates depending on when events, etc., are held and whether there's a smash hit. More than short-term revenue fluctuations, long-term growth will be achieved by expanding the revenue base. Of course, everyone wants to expand the revenue base. Even covers trying to do that. Number of VTubers has grown continuously year on year. Of course, as we've seen, because that's what they do. They, they freaking try to flood the market with as many VTubers as they can. Live streaming per VTuber has dropped. Per VTuber has had a drop, as you're seeing here. But stable progress, quote unquote, stable progress on their live streaming section here is, uh, you know, it's not really that stable. It's actually, I mean, it hasn't dropped a lot, but it has been dropping. And a per YouTuber basis, which is what you want to see more of, that's what counts more. It's been dropping. Commerce per VTuber has, been, has had growth because, of course, especially for them, they get 98%. Remember, that's that 98% goes straight to Nidhi Sanji, 2% goes to the livers. So of course their commerce is gonna grow big. Promotions and per VTuber promotions are up, which you know, they're promoting their talents. That's, that can be good. Seasonable, stable progress. Events per VTuber has either stagnated or fallen recently. Uh, quarterly fluctuations based on the timing of events. With anime uh, and video streaming content gaining popularity, they're expecting their popularity to grow. But I have a feeling cover is going to grow more than them in the sense of year on year and percentage wise. They are very, very, very uh, like they're looking forward to their forecast. Virtual idol VTuber market size forecast. This includes, of course, Hololive, but they're not doing the company A and all that kind of stuff that Hololive does, that cover does. Domestic VTuber market size is going to grow, of course. Um, any color's market environment is going to be others are, are have a large market share. Uh, any color has a smaller one, competitor A. Uh, I guess they're trying to go against cover with competitor A doing that part. Assume that top two companies, including Anna Keller, account for more than half of the market sales, which is very true. Large companies can easily leverage their superiority. Uh-oh, superiority. That's what any color loves doing. Through infrastructure and use of existing communities. Uh, that's a bad use of words. That's a bad use of verbiage, honestly. Background of concentration of major VTuber firms. It's a vertical launch of VTubers utilizing existing communities, which is what they're trying to do. Provide high quality content, which they have. I mean, the JP side always tries. Their VTubers try, but they themselves aren't doing anything for to create uh, high quality content, honestly. They are com building that infrastructure. They're building that new uh, studio, but that's because Hololive built their studio. Market where large companies easily leverage their, their stuff, as they say. But superiority is a bad word, bad verbiage. Uh, more broken promises, absolutely. We are building a broad fan base of all genders, ages, especially among young adults and Generation Z. So they're saying male to female, they have a larger one because they do Fujoshi baiting, of course. Uh, age group is 40% and older, only 7%. 19 and younger is 21. 20 to 29 is their largest uh, base. Mine, I think, is 20 to 24, I think is my largest one. Features of any color revenue spread. Uh, stable system. They're saying revenue contribution debut by year. Uh, for fiscal year 24, a quarter four, you have debut before uh, fiscal year 19, 58% of VTubers. Debut in fiscal year 2023, uh, and on uh, debut 30 VTubers. This is all the percentages. The uh, other is here. And the very last, this light one is where they only had 12 VTubers showing up here. You know, the, the percentage of VTubers, as you can see down here, they have 56 during their first start. You had after that 31, you had five in just a short period here, 22, 30 and 12 and all that kind of stuff. So they had very little, uh, they, they had kind of continuous growth of VTuber in the market. Revenue contribution per VTuber is uh, accumulated, which makes them look better. They have it that way. Revenue contribution has been lowering uh, from 96 to 100 uh, when it comes to the amount of VTubers. So the revenue contribution per VTuber when they were small was large, of course, and it's smaller when you have more people. So per VTuber, they're only about maybe one or 2%, but they have like over 130 VTubers or however much it is, 120 VTubers. So that ends up being still accumulated a good amount. And management policy for midterm growth, they aim to increase sales by 88%, profit margin operated profit by 94%, and uh, in, up to fiscal year 2027. So these are the growth charts that they're expecting. Along with continued efforts to nurture and debut VTubers, they don't nurture anything. They don't nurture anything. They're lying again. Revenue per VTuber is increasing through the strengthening of the ecosystem. Again, uh, they want revenue per VTuber to grow up and they want both number of VTubers and revenue to grow. They want to increase employee and business areas of VTuber management and planning. Ah, uh, the management has been bad. I hope they actually do increase that. It's all BS in my opinion, but I hope they do increase that. Uh, strengthening a VTuber management structure. They're trying to strengthen the structure according to what they said, but that's more an investment side. That's what they're trying at least. They plan to increase the number of VTubers by an average of 10 to 15% per year. So around 12 to 15 per year, basically 12 VTubers to 15 VTubers per year. Strengthen virtual talent academy, but they haven't really been doing much of that. Increase the number of unique VTubers. Expect the average annual growth of 10 to 15%. They want a long-term fan base with short-term, you know, investments, like not really very many investments. Invest in nurturing your top VTubers will lead an industry. 
expand each VTuber's fan communities, which, you know, I don't know how well they're going to be doing that. Their enhanced planning, they don't plan hardly anything, honestly. They do the bare minimum. Strength in any color's foundation is support VTubers. Ah, uh, that's what, that's, this is, this is where the fibbing starts, I think. But if, if, if they complete this, then I will give them a win. If, that's a big if, they complete this, then I will give them a big win. They want to continue with expansion of employees. They want to have more talent managers, which they haven't had a good I, good thing on at all. Support the activities of VTubers, but they haven't had very many managers from what I can see. Like, especially after one girl's story where they said that pretty much, and also Selen saying that they shared it with, um, I, I think they shared it with Noctix or one of those. Um, they, like, Obsidia sh or shared it with, with one other uh, generation. It's like if two generations were sharing one manager. Uh, you had Selen say that, you had one of those story, which say it's basically pretty much one manager per uh, five to six livers, which makes sense after what Selen said. Um, Sayu said that, Zion said it, one girl story, she, she pretty much repeated it. Fans through design capabilities and in-house IP, illustrators, 3D model designers, studio engineers, they want all that stuff to happen. They want mocap, they want recording, uh, new standard binaural equipment and recording studio equipment. The binaural is for like the ASMRs. Um, including the KU100, large recording studios, what they're trying to do. They're trying to in invest in increasing their IP. The studios, three times larger than its current size. Content development, new studio will offer a variety of content that they could do. A talent could go into the studio, the JP talent more than anything, could go into the studio, do ASMR, do other things like what happens with Hololive already and cover. They've been doing that for like almost a year now. Master control room will be nearly established with, you know, you know, audio stuff, all that, all that kind of stuff is good and, and, you know, on paper, but if they actually do it, then that's when I'll give them the win. Strength in the VTA, they want to, uh, engage in discovery and training, you know, get more people in there through VTA, do auditions, gather a wide range of talents to continuous production of VTubers, auditions produce more uniquely talented VTubers, and then selecting 50 to 60 candidates per year to increase the number of VTubers by an average 50 to 60 per year. That's a lot to grow with. They are doing the meat wave thing again. They're absolutely doing the meat wave thing again. Discovering talents that could lead to development of fan differences. Accelerate VTuber unit development. Leveraging our diversity of VTubers. Develop a stronger fan community. I don't know how they're going to do the fan community. They want to form new units, but they are flooding the market. That's the issue. The individual activities showing natural individuality with each VTuber. Flexible activities. are, And then unit activities, of course, of Roth Mao and other ones. Potential to expand a different fan base than working as an individual. And existing units and formation of new units, they, they formed all these units. They do mini albums. They're trying to show that they do albums. They do commerce. They do all these things to promote. That's what they're trying to show their investors, at least. Uh, they're strengthening the commerce expansion. Develop a system to supply a wider range of items uh, demanded by the fan community through expansion of staff. Increasing revenue per VTuber by maximizing potential commerce. Expansion of production planning and product lines. Managing appropriate sales. Uh, product planning in line with current trends. So they're, they're trying to increase their products. CDs. Uh, you know, plushies, that type of stuff. They're just trying to increase that. And that's where they're focusing on instead of focusing on their talents from what it looks like. Business investment and shareholder returns. Uh, utilize the profits generated from the business while considering the balance between the growth of VTuber business through business expenses and capital investment. So they're trying to show their investors that there's going to be capital investment. They're going to actually be investing in their stuff. They're actually going to be doing, you know, things further like that. Uh, you know, conceptual representation of capital allocation. Uh, booked as operating expenses here. This little part here, investment in human resources, that's that's, the, that's a lie, I'm pretty sure. Uh, cumulative uh, throughout the year, uh, fis up to fiscal 2077, they're going to be doing year on year, probably 40 billion Japanese yen of operating uh, cash and cash equivalents. They're going to expect to have cash on hand, probably 16 billion yen. And uh, investment, this is cutting it down even further, of uh, 3.3 to 5 billion yen on investments and in capital expenses, media mix projects, uh, cash on hand, M&A investments. Uh, approximately 20 billion yen and they have a uh, shareholder return over 30 billion yen board of directors resolved ah here's a big thing board of directors resolved to repurchase 7.5 billion yen worth of treasury stock through market purchases between 13th and august 31st so starting june 13th they're going to be doing a humongous stock buyback so that means that any color itself is going to be buying their own stock what is that going to do it is going to pump the numbers, it is going to make the numbers go up, and it's going to make their stock look really good because they're doing a stock buyback. They're not the only company that does it. A lot of American companies have done it, Boeing, a lot of the big companies do that. But this looks really bad because right now, a lot of companies do that when their stocks are doing well. Right now, they're just doing it because their stocks aren't doing so well. Financial policy, use of debt in addition to own funds, maximum M&A budget, approximately 50 billion yen, acquire an IP, 
pipeline that, you know, they're trying to increase their pop pipeline, long-term visions, of course, merchandising, internet distribution, live entertainment, all that kind of stuff. They want to replace broader entertainment industry driven by expansion of metaverse. They want to expand their metaverse with video ads, uh, domestic industry, overseas anime industry. They're taking a look at everything. The appendix here, of course, is uh, they want to be an entertainment factory again. They're using that word, the word that they don't know looks makes them look really bad. We use technology, change entertainment. We will continue more free and more diverse and detailed content. So they're focusing on the content. In entertainment economic zone, many people live and work will change dramatically. There's no barrier between users and creators. Who is a VTuber? He, not an anime character, it's a human touch. Again, the streamer is a person who actually does the streaming. Uh, the uh, VTuber itself is diverse and deeper background. The character develops into business stuff. Comprehensive support system. That's a lie. They don't have a support system. They do the concept, the in-house production, which is basically, you know, creating the stuff. Application from diverse universe and product potential streamers. Fostering VTubers who can be active in the mid to long term through the development of streamers' techniques and mindsets. Supporting various live streaming, including 2D streaming and high quality 3D streaming. Debut as a VTuber of Nidhi Sanji and engage live streaming in other activities. And then, of course, no support. At the day after they debut, no support. They're not showing supporting anything. They're just saying that they debut and that's it. Human resources risks, they, they're going through everything. You know, the reliance on popular VTubers uh, is a risk as well. Uh, policy for addressing the risk. Uh, they're saying that they recognize the risk dependence on specific VTubers, not likely to materialize. Address the risk of VTubers moving on to the next stage of their careers by enhancing a support system. They're trying to enhance a support system. Developing a system that can support a wide range of activities. Reputational risk. They want to strengthen systems to respond promptly to inappropriate activities. Basically, defamation and all that kind of stuff. Reputational damage, like they did with Raziel, trying to shut people up. Actively recruiting new employees and create a comfortable working environment and human resources system. Uh, strive to enhance training programs in addition to training through, through work so that employees can fully demonstrate their abilities after being hired. Identifying materiality. They're protecting intellectual property. They're saying, you know, they're established a system to protect against infringements. Responding to defamation issues. Countermeasures with, with any color and, you know, uh, hollow life and cover. Talent development. They're trying to say that they're going to be doing things to develop talents after their debut. Uh, daily support by managers, which is a lie so far, at least on the EN side. Provide a support system that includes periodic compliance training system to subsidize the cost of health checkups. So at least they're trying to, to change things. But basically, Raziel and other documents in, in the contracts and things like that kind of made it so that it is now being done, but it should have been done a long time ago. So this is what they're trying to do in the future. Subsidize health checkups and support counseling sessions. So it's good that they're doing good stuff in the future, but they didn't do it in the past. And that's the problem. Their disclaimer down here, of course, is saying, you know, not everything isn't set in stone. This is our you know forecast. This is our expectations. Take it with a grain of salt type of thing. Everyone is getting tired of the of the other stuff, but we have the memes right now. And that's what we're going to do. EN year on year minus 22%. EN quarter on quarter minus 8%. This was form from uh, 4chan, of course. And yes, the big drop with Matara Nina, Sayu Zion, Doki Britselen, Mint uh, Pomu, uh, Usan Yugo. Uh, then we have Michi Mochi V, Mika Melatika. All of them are leaving. And it's just like all the bad stuff. Elira is right there next to the uh, Nidhi Sanji. You have Hololive V Shoujo and FaZe being like, yep, we're going to grab all your people. We're definitely going to grab all your people. But yeah, I love it. You got to love it. Uh, more like a stalemate, rather. And it says, Victorious. Uh, it says, After the Great Quarter Four War, the forces of the EN surrendered according accords, uh, ceding the EN market to the Victorious U United Chuba Alliance. Yeah, they're having fun there. Of course, the Quarter Four Streamer Definition page. We have uh, Performs Whatever You Want in the Virtual World. Excludes Risk Scandals Related to Personal, Not Idle. Yes, that's, that's, a, that's a meme, of course. The Not Idle Performs Whatever You Want in Virtual World and excludes Risks scandals related to personal stuff and we have uh kurosanji jp branch uh versus kurosanji en branch in the quarter four report this is of course uh rick and morty it's a rick and morty meme kurosanji quarter four report be like nidhi jp is is burying nidhi en worse is yet to come they did a whole year's worth of events for nidhi en to make up for the loss and it was still down by the next report it's going to be worse of course it is that is all for right now. Of course, comment, like, and subscribe down below. Thank you for being here. Of course, I love having the conversations with you guys. I love having these things with you guys. And I do appreciate it whenever you guys do comment. Take a look at my description for my socials. There's a Discord. There's Twitter. There's other places that you can check me out. Twitch, etc. And also check on your screen right now because there might be a video that you might enjoy. Thank you.